Ah, g'day guys, back again. Um, doing a video, I'm going to sort of do probably several parts to it. Uh, first off, I'll just, uh, this is more so, again, Australian um, consumer content, so to speak. Uh, this is an old set of um, Trilock uh, door furniture. Uh, it's, the, it's the latest sort of version. Um, did one of a job for one of my uh, accounts and uh, I did go bloody fair whack too. Uh, it's probably irrelevant where it, if I told you where it was in Adelaide, unless you've actually been here and know. Uh, pocket woman would know, but I did go, I'm fair way up north and uh, had to go to Pasadena, which is about 40 k from my bloody house, which wasn't a drama. I still had a little few things to do on the in the on the way on the way back, but uh, yeah, the the uh, tenant um, was having trouble. Uh, they couldn't get in the back door um, via the handle on the Gainsborough. Um, that's the outside exterior furniture handle, and that's the inside. Um, they could still get in via the key, you know, using the uh, the Euro cylinder to retract the uh, latch and double lock the uh, latch bolt. That wasn't a problem, but they couldn't access the door via the handle. Um, what had happened, um, it's a pretty straightforward fix, but I think I've gone over this with Gainsborough. I don't, don't, use, don't use them, don't recommend them, don't fit them, refuse to fit them, run them all. Um, I'll repair them if I can, that's not a problem if I've got the parts or I can, yeah, if I can repair something, I will repair it. But these are expensive, it's about 220 bucks at Bunnings, I think. My price is about $178, so, yeah, that's trade, so, overpriced, um, yeah, tat in my book. But that's me, that's my opinion, so some people might love them. Um, but uh, they're notorious for breaking down. Um, especially the internal uh, hub assembly with the latch um, and you can't get parts from Gainsborough, they won't sell the parts um, their attitude is uh, tough luck, buy a new lock, yeah it's fine mate yeah. $228 or whatever, that's not going to fly anyway I got there and I um, what I found, uh, it's a pretty simple, mis well not a mistake or well, it was a mistake from someone's point of view but a simple fix uh, that's the spindle bar that, um, goes through the cavity and the handle on the inside and which would be relative to the cavity on the outside handle. Uh, what someone had done taken off or even maybe I didn't get the history of the, of the lock but either ever uh, installed the lock forgot to put the uh, return spring or the spring latch return spring uh, in the cavity um, which is ultra important in the end, at the end of the day it serves a body function a very important function um, without it that just sits there yeah it's just it sits there on its own weight yeah which it shouldn't do it should be it should be a spring behind that whereas the spring tension uh, pushing that uh, spindle through to the outside handle so what they happened they uh, didn't put the spring in or lost it or whatever or you know someone with the attitude oh it's only a spring who needs that anyway <laughs> but what happened it did work originally uh, without the spring it was just sit there but what happened over time um because of the continued use of the outside handle on the spindle bar it's over time it's pushed it further and further into the cavity of the inside handle and to a point where it got stuck so what was happening the it was wasn't long enough to get into the um, the handle on the outside of the cavity uh, yeah so it was just sort of doing that just catching but sort of uh, yeah it's just at that point there where it's just yeah they couldn't get in but so uh, yeah I thought this is more so if anyone's playing with their games for if they have them if they want they're taking them apart just make sure you put that um, spring I haven't got the original because like, like I said you can't get parts for games so luckily I keep springs notes and springs I, I modified to get the job sorted and fix it but so what yeah this is not the spring obviously it's a bigger one the spring would uh, 
fit over that uh, protrusion on the end of the spindle. Yeah, what would happen? That spring should go in the cavity there, and what that would do is give give your spring tension, which um, would yeah you know, relay to the spindle bar and uh, protrude it out at all times, so you're getting positive uh, positive uh, locking off the uh, square spindle in the uh, handle. So yeah. So that what that's what happened anyway. So I thought a bit of interest for anyone who's doing games or um, taking their games apart. Yeah, always make sure that spring's in there. Anyway, yeah. So that was uh, I sorted that it was pretty straightforward fix. But um, on the way out, all the exterior doors are try like games, bro. And uh, as I was leaving, the husband just turned up in the driveway. So oh, while well, you're here, can you check this one? So yeah. Getting close to peak hour traffic. Uh, oh, I'm still 40 k's away. I have to go past the city. So anyway, I said, "Yeah, I'll have a look." Anyway, what happened? Whoever fitted it from from day dot, the lock on the door, um, they fitted it correctly in relation to this, yeah, this post and the spindle hole. But uh, what I did, they when they bought the 53 mil hole for the uh, assembly, latch assembly, and uh, Euro cylinder assembly. Probably drilled the hole, probably three mil or so too far towards the hinge side of the door, which made it so when you assembled it, obviously that because it's three mil out, had a whack with the uh, cavity in the handle, the furniture for the uh, euro, it's put it out of whack. So, what the guy obviously by the fit of it, they've actually because it's out of whack, they've actually forced it on there. To get the handle and secured it and nicked off but what they've done because it's so it's out of whack it's put binding pressure on every from the handle down to the cylinder so that what was happening with the uh, handle was like really tight then it would work to retract the uh, the latch so bloody hell i was there anyway so what i did i can't i had to re rebore that hole correctly which wouldn't have been a problem but the furniture big enough to hide it but I, had, I didn't want to get caught up in traffic, so I'm not, I'm not doing it. Not today. I'm good, no doubt I'm going to have to come back anyway, because that's not going to last long. So what I did, I was just... Uh, uh, these are probably, I don't know, 8 mil posts. I actually blew them out to about 10 mil, which is not a drama. They gave me a bit of um, a couple of mil lead play uh, on the uh, furniture, which pretty much got the everything sort of lined up to the point where we could use, that, use the handle, so... We see how it goes. I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, if it stays that way, it's fine. If not, I'll go back there. It's not a problem. But I did warn him that uh, potentially it's. I can't guarantee it. I didn't fit it. So anyway, that's the story of that. Um, oh, I just these. I found a little. I don't know. It's an anomaly or a little factory factory defect. I don't know. But um, these are two forty fives. Both of the same early type. Uh, with the patent numbers really early 70s uh, with the same extrusion profile this one's bent this is the one where they're going to get that divot out um that's all the guts going to get around it soon um with the two 245 247s well what i found over the time and uh, pretty much pretty standard um the shack shackle is retained and pivots from the left hand side of the stamping on the face and the key pins on the right hand side of the face or the you know, chamber holes and the, the pins that's how it would be in its correct format if you will uh, what I found with this one um, yeah the, the, obviously the pins on the right hand side the swivels on the left and retained on the left but there's no stamping Stamping's on the back. So I don't know if that was a mistake in the factory. Someone put the, you know, the extrusion uh, in the stamping press. You know, when I <laughs> ask about, I'm not sure. But I don't know if that's my eyes or not. Uh, different font as well. Uh, that, the, the D's smaller on that one than this one. Uh, so maybe I think that might be earlier. An earlier stamping than that. 
because uh, I think I'm pretty sure the D was the smaller D was the earlier version of the stamping as a com you know, compared to that stamping. But uh, yeah, I don't know. My eyes, that stamping looks a bit you know, skew with to the right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, just thought I'd point it out. Yeah, yeah, might, might make it more valuable. Who knows? Instead of being worth, you know, $35, it's probably worth $40. So. <laughs> anyway. Uh, 10 minutes. Bloody hell. Um, yeah, I found another one of these too. I didn't think I had one. This one I got from Flea Bay about three weeks ago. I probably showed it on the video. Uh, brass shackle. Uh, I'm not touching this one. I'm keeping this one as, as is with the patina and the original key. Um, as uh, um, Bronx pointed out, yeah, the L, the large L, which follows three underneath, underneath, right to the right hand side. The old can't give you a date on it, but uh, definitely seventies, I would think. Um, yeah, so I'm not touching that. I'll leave that as it is. But unfortunately, this one's been. This wasn't my doing, by the way. That's why I found it. Um, yeah, there's no turning back with this now. I've got to go and refurbish it. I can't. It doesn't look right like that. Yeah. So I'll refurbish this one brass as well. So I've got two. I'm catching up to you, Funky. Uh, I've got a long way to go to catch your collection, but any game that I don't collect anyway, so that's not an issue. But I collect for collectors, if if you will. Yeah. That's going to someone too for a collection. Um, to yeah, add to their collection. Uh, same with that one too. They, they haven't got this design with a patent number, but that one's been refurbished. Like yeah, but that matter still, still a nice collectible. But uh, yeah, so yeah, I've got two of those um, fat body two thirty fours. Um, also found these too. I didn't remember really I had them. Uh, well, I might have had them, but I can't remember preview on them or showing them. Uh, these are not probably 90s, um, early 90s, um, 234s, pretty stock standard, uh, probably 5 pin body, but uh, they've both got um, brass shackles on them, um, yeah, I think they're key to like actually. Um, yeah, oh, a little bit clicky that one, but that's fine. Yeah, so they're key to like. Um, yeah, and this one here, it's the 234 90s stock standard bog, uh, still shackle. Um, re no, I did refurbish, just cleaned up. I didn't, I didn't learn this one, I just gave it a uh, some uh, quick rub, some uh, some paper, but I might, uh, yeah, get that linish that properly off and get it back to new old stock look. Uh, give it out, no doubt. But uh, yeah, two of these are going to come into play in, in a video coming up shortly. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll explain that. It'll, be, it'll make sense when I show them uh, for the reason for it. So. Yeah, so that's uh, pretty much that. Um, what else is there here? Oh, this is for someone anyway. I won't say who it is. It's between private. Um, let's see, uh, the uh, UY. Um, just want to clarify is that what you want is that what you expect so that I'm happy with to send it it's not a problem so um, also some uh, LW5R uh, LW4R uh, and the old uh, posty post office box key um, aftermarket key 21R um, some springs there too mate these silver ones are modern acid alloy, Lockwood genuine. The copper ones, or brassy copper ones, whatever they are, they're 90s, 201 genuine Lockwood. Um, chamber plugs for 234 and 245 series for the pin chambers. Uh, they're out aftermarket LAB, but they're fine. Um, these are genuine 90s Lockwood uh, shackle retainer pins. Uh, Plugs for the shackle retainer for the 234 and the 245 series. Yeah, these are genuine Lockwood 90s. And 234 
Uh, yeah, shackle retainer pins, uh, genuinely again. 90s Lockwood uh, steel pins. So, yeah, I've got quite a few of them, so it's not a drama. So, yeah. <coughs> That's for deal with that one, that pack. Um, let's see, 15 minutes. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I'll do a yeah, video later. I'll try to do a video on uh, Euro cylinders, how I have and always have um, you know, deconstructed them and rekeyed them. You don't need, well, I don't use that Huck, Chinese Huck thing, whatever it is, pinning shoe or whatever, whatever the, that bloody thing is. I don't use that. I was just using Argus, um, Argus uh, uh, tool to. Uh, Repin, rekey, or reassemble um, Euro cylinders. Uh, that's completely from from scratch. You know, balance stack. Uh, do you know, load the top pins as well. It's a bit off, a little awkward doing it with the the Argus tool, but it's not a problem. It's just that you'll be careful with the last putting the last driver pin in because yeah, you know, getting the tweezers in the cavity to do it. But I'm used to it, so it's not a problem. But um, yeah, I'll expose that and show that for Murloc, just for, yeah, so he can have a look. Uh, but that's the way I do it. It's like anything in life, there's no concrete way or rule. Um, you know, if I do something a certain way, yeah, that's, not, that's not set in stone. That's the way I do it. I mean, if you can achieve the same result, um, yeah, go for it. Good luck. That's good. But, um... Yeah, I'll give you the dimensions of that Argus tool too. You can make one out of wood. I, I, before I had that Argus, we've had, had for a long, long time. I used to have a home, my home brew, a uh, little tool made out of stainless steel. Yeah, cost about you know, 10 cents to make. I'll give you the dimensions of the Argus tool. You can go and get, get, a, bit, get a piece of wood, an old Allen key, a uh, screw, and you, you can make your own um, Euro pinning shoe. Or, well, not pinning shoe, but uh, yeah. Hold back like shoe for the driver pins to remove the plugs, but I'll do that in the next video. Um, there's a few videos out there of taking them apart, but I don't think I've, I've seen one where they're using the well, the genuine tool, the Argus uh, tool. So I'll do that. Um, oh, before I go too, it's old 230, skanky old 234. I mentioned I did a um. I was going to put, leave that in uh, Pepsi Cola or Coca Cola for 24 hours. Well, I did. I left it in Pepsi Cola for 24 hours. Uh, I lost, I deleted the video. It was, yeah, I wasn't really happy with it. But yeah, it didn't do much. So the only thing it did do is it left a, um, must have had a chemical reaction with the, left a coppery brass or well, coppery look. See the red there? The red? That's what it did. It just took a, Bit of a coating off, I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure, but I think brass is copper and tin, maybe. I stand to be corrected. I could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, so that's what it really did was just uh, give it that coppery uh, tarnish to it. Uh, but anyway, so uh, yeah, it's, I'm gonna rebuild this one to new old stock. So it's like yeah, nice and clean and new. Put a new shackle. Um, I put an aftermarket BDS stainless steel 234 shackle. I've got genuine um, locker ones, but they come with their locksmith form pack, which I got from uh, my my drug dealer. Not drug dealer. <laughs> I don't do drugs. <coughs> my lock dealer. Uh, yeah, partner in crime down in SA. She uh, yeah, she has some got some contacts I don't have, but uh, yeah, she scored some for me. So she's got some as well. So I'm sure she'll preview them one day. Anyway, uh, yeah, so have a look at that. Next time you see it, I'll like, show it in its um, refurbed condition with a new shackle. Um, yeah. Anyway, that'll do. It's 19 minutes. It's getting late. So uh, until next time, uh, take care and uh, goodbye.